I need new music. This is the JJO Discover New Music Podcast. Joining me today is Alessandro Viman Ventuela. Did I say that right? Venturella. Venturella. I'm so, I practice. Venturella. Venturella. <laughs> uh, I think I'll just have to do the American version. Uh, Ventu. Uh, uh, how, how would you say? Venturella. That's the American rise. Venturella. Yeah. There Venturella, you go. Yeah. The bastardized version of it. Anyway, V Man. Let's just go with that. That's what we all know and love you as. Uh, v Man. Right. How are you, man? I'm good, thank you. So let's get to it. Uh, let's Excellent. talk to Slipknot, man. What everyone is so geeked out about the end so far. Now. Now, the title of the album, The End So Far, maybe foreshadowing to some people. Maybe are we trying to get signals out of this? Uh, should we not look into it? Is there anything behind the uh, the album title that we need to know about? Or is it just a good album title? It's just a good album title. That's it. I don't think, yeah, you don't need to look into it. I mean, you know, we're still going. We didn't put it out and then stop there. You, know? uh, you know, you've done enough uh, enough records and songs where people love to uh, uh, assume or uh, make their own uh, takes on everything. So good to know that it's just a good album title and we can go from there. Uh, yeah. Uh, so obviously new Slipknot and people kind of have in their mind what they know they're going to get from Slipknot. So this is a two part question. Part one. And the phrasing of this is the only way I could think to phrase it. So what is this a typical Slipknot album light? And then part two, how is this not a typical Slipknot album? So maybe what's the expected and unexpected of the end so far? Um, I just think, you know, with this one, we're just pushing it a bit in the boundaries of music, you know? And I think where, where, where we've come from compared to previous records is just, the, just the, the approach, you know, spending a lot of time with Clown writing this and putting aside basic this is how we should do things or that. It's just been, let's just write music. And the stuff came from that, you know? I feel like with this record, the more the more it's been um, out and stuff, I've been listening to it again. And, I, you know, I'm one of those people where, where I listen to a record that I've been, you know, working on or writing or whatever. And I, and I just stopped listening to it for a very good time. And then since it came out, you know, just listening to it and remembering all those little minute things that build up into layers and they take seeing where the songs turn in the direction of music, you know. I feel like that's something that uh, has not been done before with the band. And but I mean, maybe at certain aspects with, um, like, We Are Not Your Kind, they, they were, it was starting to come there, you know, especially like the interludes, they've now turned into pieces and songs like Adderall, prime examples of that, you know, where you had an idea, the idea just kept evolving and growing and layering and stuff like that. And then it just turned into this. I think that's one of the most amazing songs on the record, you know. And that's what the record kicks off with. Uh, what what yeah. can we expect from this album that, that Slipknot always gives us? Well, I mean, you know, there's a bit in there for everybody and, but it's, it's also just the way that the album's been made and the way that we've done it is, you know, I think, you know, people are like, oh, I just want to listen to heavy stuff. It's like, well, you can. There's heavy songs on there. But <laughs> I think, well, the album in itself is a flow, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a piece in, its, in itself. It's not just this track six and then I'm out, you know. It's, yeah. You have to start from the beginning, you get to the end of it. And because of that, that's what makes the album, you know, so special, I think. For you, uh, is there maybe a favorite track? I know you said you kind of shelved it for a little bit, then you came back. Is there one track that maybe really speaks to you or that you really just dig each time you hear it? I, 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 I mean, I think all of them, really. I know, I know that's such a, that's such a you know, <laughs> stupid reply, but I don't know. It's just, you know, when I hear songs like Adderall and stuff like that, and, but then, you know, you get to the end and you've got Finale, it's just like the, what went into those songs to make them what they are. I think that's like the the thing to me that really stands out about this record but I just think that it's, it's like you know like the bookshelf and you've got like one there you've got one there and it's just like catalog in between you know mm -hmm. I think that's what makes it such a you know cohesive package in itself you know I love it. All of you veterans in the music industry, even going back to your early guitar tech days and where you guys are at now, I think it'd be easy to kind of plug and play for Slipknot or whatever you're doing. Uh, do you find, or how do you find new ways to challenge yourself in this? Because there's nothing really left to prove. What, what do you guys do? Well, I think that's what this record is. It's, it's you know, to be, to be able to play these songs live and stuff. It's not just, you know, you wake up one day and you plug the guitar in. It's like, there's so much involved in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like songs like Adderall, you know, Clown plays drums on that song. And 
but then you know we've got Mike in the band now and Mike's a pianist and he's also that plays timbal you know what I mean like uh, there's so many layers and stuff that it's not a case of just turning up and doing it you know it's something that we've got to work out and to be able to, to perform uh, and I think that's what pushes you know is pushing the boundary the slip up now it's not the case of just all right well you just got to play that guitar part you play that and you play that and that's it you know it's there's a lot going on in this record and <laughs> To be able to play it live, I mean, that's a true testament of, you know, being a musician. I think that's what this record is doing, is, is pushing it, pushing the boundaries, you know. So who knows, maybe, you know, when people go see us live next, you'd be like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be a case of just plug and play and just go, and it's not. It's going to be, a, you know, like an orchestra almost in sense of to try and get all these parts out again. So that's hey. what I'm looking forward to. You know? This is the JJO Discover New Music Podcast. Listen, rate, share. Subscribe. Hey everybody, Corey Taylor here from Slipknot. Discover new Slipknot now on JJO. I'm sure you've had heard every possible question about the mask, uh, but I've always had one. Does the animidity, the the you know that that character, does it make you play different when you? Because you've obviously you've been playing for a long time. Uh, does it make you play different when you put the mask on? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of. I feel like it's a, like a when you're in one of those uh, deprivation chambers. If that's the right word, <laughs> you know, you've got in ears on, you've got a mask on, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know. Once I take my glasses off as well, I feel like I'm in a sensory deprivation channel. You know? So I don't know. It's just, you know, like, especially when I'm playing, um, I don't really have much of anyone else apart from it. It's just me, Jay, and a little bit of Corey, and that's all I have in my inners. So it's very focused, you know. So once you've got the mask on and stuff, and you're looking out and looking at people in the crowd, and you just see the way that people a vibe being on the way that people are enjoying the show. You know, that's what, that's then when I get my, you know, I'm in my zone, but then I'm like, oh, there's people here, aren't there? <laughs> right. And then, you know, and that's when the vibe comes, you know? Yeah. When, when you see people vibe, then, then you vibe more. I feel whenever I put on a mask or a costume, I always get myself into trouble. So it's just very intriguing to me that, you <laughs> got to do that every time and it works out. So uh, and, and one more thing too, because I know you recently got married uh, in 2020. Uh, do you yeah. use the mask to scare your wife? Please tell me you have at some point. No, she's seen me too many times. I think my normal face scares her enough. But... <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, it's just your face. That's okay. It's just your face, yeah. <laughs> the end so far. It is out now. Go get it, and then obviously uh, go see Slipknot Live and throw your neck out because that's the best way to do it, man. Before you go, uh, V-Man, I do like to play a little game called Rapid Fire. Now that we got the important stuff out of the way. Uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Let's start simple. Chili dog or corn dog? I mean, yeah, corn dog. Corn dog. Okay. Do you put mustard yeah. or ketchup? On your corn dog, or do you? Just go to- uh, I, I'd say I'm more uh, uh, must uh, ketchupy guy. Yeah. Ketchupy guy, that's good. We don't we don't have corn dogs in England, so just, that's just true. I, you know, I should have thought of a more UK <laughs> answer for you. Uh, bangers or mash? There you go. Bangers or mash? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only thing bang- I can think of. <laughs> do you love bangers or mash? Uh, okay, what about uh, Bigfoot or the Loch Ness monster? Who would you rather see? Uh, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Uh, sweet or salty? Salty. Salty. Uh, would you rather have to fight the cast of Golden Girls circa 1988 armed with wiffle ball bats or the cast of the Little Rascals armed with prison shanks when they're like little kids? Prison shanks. You gonna have more little- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> At least they're trying to like hurt me. The other ones I don't think would be trying to hurt them. He just puts I'm going to be fighting. If, if I'm going to be fighting someone, you know, I hope they've got a knife. I'm not, if they've got older women with whiffle bats, it's not really fair, is it? No, that's true. And you're a bigger guy, you know. So I mean, it, it probably <laughs> wouldn't be fair to those little old ladies. But still, now I have the image of you in your mask, uh, getting stabbed by the little rascals, right just in the shin, right in the shin. Oh, exactly. Yeah. But you know, that's why you got legs. <laughs> Just punting those little rascals around. I love it. All right. Well, thank you for humoring me on that, V-Man. No uh, once again, everyone, the end so far. Brand new Slipknot. It's out. Uh, it's a treat, man. Uh, stuff that we haven't heard, stuff that we had heard, all mixed together, and uh, you're in for it, man. And then, of course, Slipknot out doing their thing uh, that they do. Thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it, buddy. No worries. Thank you very much. Sorry for being late. This is the JJO Discover New Music Podcast. Listen, rate, 
share, subscribe. Discover new music now at WJJO.com, in the JJO app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Brock has a new interview every Thursday evening between 6 and 7. 941 JJO.